What's up? Today I find myself with the compulsion, is that a word? With the compulsion to share another interesting story of another interesting person. And uh, this guy in particular, this is a, uh, a gentleman that lives here in Malibu, has lived here for a long time. Is my hair okay? He's been around. Uh, in the music industry for a long time. He's a very good friend of mine. Uh, we hit it off a few years ago because of cars. He's got a Ranchero wagon, he's got a Corvette, he's got a BMW, and he's got a Falcon, I think? But he's quite an extraordinary individual, someone who has been incredibly successful at what he does simply because of the fact that he loves what he does. In fact, he loves it so well that he's attracted a tremendous amount of talent around him. But he's got a great story, and I wanted to share that with you guys. Once again, a fantastic experience. Always fun to hang out with this guy. And today, on the blog, please welcome Tom Panunzio. Tom Panunzio, I'm a music producer. I've uh, been in the music business in one way or another my whole life. As a young kid, I learned to play the guitar and I went out and got into a band, formed a band. It's kind of how I started. And then uh, I decided I didn't want to play in a band anymore. I wanted to become an engineer after the first time I got to go into a studio and, and record. I'm like, what's that guy behind the glass doing? You know, and I was interested in the technology. And I was also tired of being in a band. The reason I wanted to become an engineer was because I didn't want to be on the other side of the glass anymore. And felt like there was a lot of guys that were a lot better than me. I didn't really feel I had the personality and the star quality that, you know, you need to become a successful rock star. And so I, um, I got friendly with an engineer at a studio called Sear Sound in Manhattan, where I'd been recording with a band, and he showed me some things, and he told me the best way to learn sound is to listen, and if I could find a band that would let me mix their live sound, I would learn how to mix and learn what to listen for. I ended up going to Hawaii with Richie Havens for three months on a tour and, and mixing him for a start, which was pretty easy because there were no drums and not too much electric stuff. It was mostly acoustic. Occasionally got to play with him. I grew up, you know, to, to, my mother would tell you, but she was alive, that when the Beatles were on Ed Sullivan for the first time, and I watched it, that changed my life. And it seemed like for the first time, and I was only a kid, you know, I wasn't even a teenager yet, or 13 or something. She said that I had a mission after that, and, and, and then I had a, uh, a, a drive. I had, I had a purpose. As I grew up, I was... Uh, they're not very healthy when I grew up, and um, I never got into sports. Mickey Mantle lived on my street, so that was a pretty, uh, you know, good influence. 
you know, when I found music, I, I found what I was going to do, you know. If the kids were playing football and that was their life and, you know, it was what it was all about, you know, I, I found the guitar. So uh, John was the first guy that I, I ever worked with in the studio, and uh, from there, it just uh, was a fantastic ride. I mean, the next record I worked on was Born to Run with Bruce Springsteen and continued to work on his records for a while, and worked with the Rolling Stones and um, Patti Smith. I produced a Stevie Nicks record. I worked with Tom Petty. Um, U2 and uh, Joan Jett, who I've been working with since. Producing a record with her and Kenny Laguna now, who's just down in Nashville, a Wanda Jackson record that we're doing. And uh, Joan's always doing something. Got to go to Pomona tomorrow to see her play live, but uh, we have a documentary coming out this month. Well, they're perceived the best in the industry or in the world, you know their craft because they are. My very first job, you know, I, I started with John Lennon, you know. That was just an amazing beginning and I was so fortunate to be able to continue to work with great artists. I mean, there's, you know, there's only one John Lennon, but everybody I worked with after that, I mean, was, was great also. And so I only knew great, you know. <laughs> I mean, seriously. And I only knew people who worked very hard. You know, Springsteen, U2, those guys, man, they don't stop until they got it exactly the way it should be. And then they keep going just to make sure that's the way it should be. So I think it's really important that what you do in life is something that you love. Otherwise, then life sucks. And if you can find something you really love, I mean, you should do it at any cost. I know it's been said before, but you can do anything you want to do. And I think I proved that to myself uh, with my career, my dreams. And you got to follow your dreams, you know. You, you can't give up on your dreams. I've been a musician, I've been an uh, engineer, I've been uh, the head of A&R for uh, Geffen Records. So you you got to do it. I mean, I started out you know, working for bands for free just to, to do it, just to learn how to do it. And uh, you, you can't give up. And you gotta give it your all. You gotta, you gotta do it better than anybody else. You gotta love it so much that you, you are better than anybody else and that you do it better than anybody else. You gotta do the, the common job uncommonly well. What I'm most grateful for is that I got to live out my dream. Um, I don't know what I would have done in life. I, I love cars. That was never really my dream. I still work on cars. I love cars. That's something I'll always do. I got a garage, six car garage over there full of cars and I work on them all. But that wasn't my dream. Like in the music business, if you say my name, most people know who I am. And, and I have a, a great reputation and a lot of credibility. Uh, one, because I've been doing it for so long and I've been around and worked on so many records. But the other thing is because I've always given it my all. And I've always had a rule that you always do what's best for the record. And that means anything. Staying up for days. I've been lucky. I've been married for a long time and my wife's very understanding. But being able to balance that and deal with having a family. I have a daughter and, and I've been able to be a good father and be here for everything for her. But, you know, it's really important that you just, you know, you find your path. And, you know, there's going to be a lot of obstacles that are going to be dropped in your way. And what life's about is if you can make it around them. And um, you just can never give up, you know. If that's what you want to do, you got to really go for it. If you really want to succeed, you're going to need to work hard. I mean, that's that's the bottom line. I mean, you know, it's all a lot about your work ethic. But if you work hard at anything hard enough, you usually can master it. And uh, I wasn't born with, I don't think, any great talents. I think I just 
made it because I worked hard and I never gave up.